Okay, so here we go, guys. We've got, um, <clears throat> what is this? 5.6, day two. Okay, 5.6, day two, an application of a law of cosines. And, you know, during this application process, if you feel the need to use the law of sines, go ahead. I mean, they're both there. But keep in mind, sine, the law of sines is restricted when we're working with obtuse angles. Okay, so be careful as we're working through with those. But today, we're looking at uh, an airplane pilot. Let's see how this works. An airplane pilot sets out from the airport on a heading of 20 degrees, flying at 200 miles per hour. After an hour, he changes or she changes his heading or her heading to 40 degrees. After another half hour on this new heading, he or she lands at their house. What is th their distance from the airport to home in the morning when she or he leaves his house and his plane or her plane to return to the airport on what heading should he or she uh, fly to get there? Now, this is kind of like a three part question. The first part is I've got to um, draw a kind of a diagram, just kind of give me a picture of what this triangle looks like to find how far they flew on each heading. Um, the second part is a distance total from the airport. Um, <clears throat> the third part is the direction from their home back to the airport. Um, so let's do this in those with that idea. Okay, so the first thing is, remember, 20 degrees. So it leaves the airport on a heading 20 degrees, okay, and maybe perhaps I can do a little bit better with my, um, let's do this this way. There, okay, we're going to pull that down a little bit more. Um, heading at 20 degrees, okay, coming off. So this is 20 degrees. Now, after... Um, flying at 200 miles an hour, after an hour, so this is 200 miles, okay, of flying, it's 200 miles at 20 degrees, um, they do go on a new heading, okay, this heading is 40 degrees, okay, so it's more like that, 20 degrees, 40 degrees, actually probably a little bit better than that, so let's try that again, make, get, get her a look better. That's better. Okay. And he, after another half hour on this direction, so he's going to go a half hour on that. That's about half that distance. So it's 100 miles for that second one. 100 miles. And that's 40 degrees. And we'll do that in black. 40 degrees. That means this is 50 degrees, supposedly. Okay. This is 90 degrees. And remember, this is also 20 degrees. Okay. So this whole angle here, is 160, 160 degrees, okay? Now, keep in mind how I was able to figure that out. 20 and 20 are alternate interiors, or, okay? Being that this is parallel to this because these are northernly facing uh, vectors or lines, if you want to look at that. Those are north. This is 20, that's 20 alternate interiors. Now, 40 here, 40 and 50 are complementary, so 50 degrees here. This is 90, so it's 20, 90, 50. That's where 160 comes from. So he has 100, or she has 160 degrees here to find our length C. So I'm going to use, um, oh, I suppose, yeah, I'm going to use to find length C, and my length C I'm going to put in, because he is at home, okay? Maybe I'll make this all go down so I... That way it'll be easier. So that's home. Okay. And I'm trying to find length C. So C squared <coughs> is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C because we know what the cosine of C is. Okay. So if I'm looking at this, I've got C squared and I got A was 200 squared. B is 100 squared minus 200 times 100 cosine of 160. Okay, well, I pop that all in my calculator and I pull up 875.70483 
And remember, this is C squared, so I gotta take the square root. And this is 295.952. And what I have worked to uh, get is the distance from the airport to home. to the pilot's house. Is 200, excuse me, 295.952 miles. Okay. Now, I got a diagram. I know the distance. The next thing I've got to do is work with the idea of um, finding my heading to go back to the airport, okay? So we're looking at a heading to go back. Now, part of this heading to go back thing is kind of fun. So let's use those in blue. We're doing a heading to go back, okay? So that heading is gonna be 180 plus this area here to go back, okay? And part of that, as we go, we know that this is 40 degrees here because these are alternate interiors, okay? But there's a percent or there's a partial that's in this range. I've got to subtract out. I've got to get that angle, okay? So, you know, I'm gonna use law of sines to help me here. It is an, non, it's an acute angle, and let me use the law of sines to help me out. Um, I'm gonna look for the sine of theta. I'm gonna call that theta, and this is my theta right here. Theta is gonna be right there. Let's call that sine of theta. We're gonna follow that up. This is sine of theta, I'm gonna find that. Okay, I know across from it, it's 200. Okay, I know across from the sine of 160, we're gonna see if this works real well. It'll, it should return the same ratio, so it should be okay. Sine of 160 is, oh, where are we here? Um, 295.952, okay. No, so theta is gonna equal the inverse sine of 200 sine of 160 all over 295.952. Well, I've got to put that in my calculator and I'm just gonna pop back here and grab myself a calculator because someone forgot it. So we got 200 sine of 160 divided by 295.952. And then the inverse sine of that value is 13.36. So it's 13.3637, so four. Now I'm gonna, that is going to be subtracted from 40 that's going to be subtracted from 40 degrees. 40 degrees minus 13.364. Okay, and that will be added. That difference will be added to 180. And where that is, and remember, this is in blue, so I'm going to go back and look at my diagram. That's this area in my diagram. You guys need to see more of that diagram. That's this area in the diagram right here. This is the 40 minus 13.364. That should return uh, 26.63 that I add to 180 to get my um, direction to go back. So that's where it is. And this is my direction to go back. Return to airport. And this is directly to the airport. Okay, where I come up with oh, 206.636 degrees. Okay, so that was my other part of my answer. 
And you know, now I look at this, I started on problem two and I skipped out on problem one. So I don't know why I did that, but we'll go back and catch problem one. I'm okay with that. I um, hope you guys are. We will get this going here. Now, in problem one, um, we've got a tunnel is to be built through a mountain. Okay, so this tunnel is to be built through a mountain. Uh, to determine the approximate length of the tunnel, an ambitious math student with a homemade transit takes two measurements from a fixed point as shown in the figure. Use the student's data to determine the length of the tunnel. Well, I've got this stuff here, and all I'm going to do is find this length. Well, I'm going to use law of cosines. I only need one angle when I use the law of cosines. So I've got c squared, okay, and that's going to be c. Keep in mind, and that's going to equal a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm just going to pop my stuff in. a is 388, excuse me, 212. I lied. At 212, I'm going to erase that more because it looks like a decimal. So I got 212 squared plus 388 squared minus 2 times uh, 212 times. 388 cosine of 82.4. Okay, so I'm going to pop that in my calculator and I get a um, c squared is equal to uh, 1737300.2367 and some change. I take the square root of both sides and I find out that c is 416.810 and that is going to be feet. So now, the length of the tunnel is 416.810 feet, okay? And I wasn't supposed to round, so I can use an estimate of 420, uh, and then multiply that by whatever cost it is per foot and be able to get a really good estimate of how long and how big that tunnel should be. Okay, so hopefully those are making sense as we're going, and I'm sorry I did question two and then back to question one, um, but here we go. Question five, okay, or question three or example five in this case. In this problem, we are asked about the basis. The bases of baseball diamond are 90 feet apart in the front edge of the pitcher's rubber is 60.5 feet from the back corner of the home plate. Find the distance from the center of the front edge of the pitcher's rubber to the far corner of first base. Now, if you play baseball, you know a little bit more about this problem than most folks. Um, first of all, you know that 127 feet, 3 and 3 eighths inches is from home to uh, the center of second base and the base is 15 by 15. So it's not beyond, but we're going to assume it's beyond. So we're going to simplify this problem a little bit. Okay. Now, with the information provided, we are going to find C right here. Okay. Because we know that that cosine of 45 is right here. All right. We're going to use that as a cosine of 45. We got these values. And I've got an A and B value. I don't care which one you put them in. Oh, actually it does because we have A. So this is my A value, this is my B value. And I'm just going to pop them into my law of cosines as we get going here. So now, as we get this going on, I've got C squared equal A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. Okay. A... 60.5 squared, B, 90 squared, okay, minus 2 times 60.5 times 90, cosine of 45. So that's the information I'm popping in my calculator. Remember, that's going to feed me back a C squared. So C squared is 4059.857 and some change. I take the square root and it's 63.717 feet as I get across. And it's find the distance from the center of the front edge of the pitcher's rubber to the far corner of first base. And that it is. Okay, that's the distance. Okay, so we're saying that's right there. 
that's that distance. And we are done with problem five. Okay, this next example is kind of involved as we step through. Jim and Barbara are house hunting and need to estimate the size of a regular adjacent lot that is described by the owner as a little more than an acre. With Barbara stationed at a corner of the plot, Jim starts at another corner and walks a straight line towards her, counting his paces. They then shift corners and Jim paces again until they have recorded the dimensions of the lot in paces, as in figure 529. And it's in this uh, diagram at the bottom left corner. They later measure Jim's paces as 2.2 feet. What's the approximate acreage of the lot? Now we gotta keep in mind, Jim's paces are perfect in this problem. Okay, so we're going to make that assumption. And we're asked to use Heron's formula. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. And we're gonna pull up an order here. We're gonna bring two front. Now we wanna bring two front with order. So that goes on top. Okay, so this is the bad boy we're looking at here. And as we're looking at this, we're asked, hey, use Heron's formula to find the area in square paces. So we're going to find the area in square paces. So we got two lots going on here. Um, we got 81, 112, and 115. So this is lot one. And let's see, let's call this uh, lot two. Okay, so... In problem one, we're asked about using Heron's formula. So in lot one, I've got, uh, I should do it this way. Let's go one, and then in lot one, we have the uh, semi-perimeter of 81 plus 112 plus 115 divided by two is equal 154. So the area one is going to be equal to 154 times, well, let's subtract those as we go, 42, 39, and this is going to be, as I multiply, 429, 4291.199832, okay, that's the area of that first one. And now for my second one, the semi-perimeter, let's call that of lot two, this is gonna be 112 plus 102 uh, plus 82 divided by two is gonna equal 150, okay? And now the area of lot two is going to be that square root of 150, 38 times 48, 64, and I go ahead and that's 4184.542986. Okay, so our total area, A1 plus A2 in paces, is 8475.743 paces squared. Okay, so remember that's paces squared. Okay, now there are a few things we got to know about this in problem two. Problem two, they ask, convert the area to square feet using the measure of Jim's paces. Well, remember that 8475.743 paces squared. Let's see if I can get this over here. And we'll get this scrunched down for space use. Okay. Times 2.2 feet per pace, and we got to square that, okay? And that'll take care of our paces squared, and then it will be 2.2, and it'll give us answers in feet squared, so we'll have 41,022.595 feet squared. Now, in step three, we are asked, um, there are 5,280 feet in a mile. Convert this area of square into square miles. Convert the area to square miles. So again, I'm going to take my 41022.595 feet squared. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply. Remember, we just found out there are 5,280 feet in one mile, and we're going to square that because I'm looking for getting rid of my squares. 
And so this is going to be 0 0.00147 miles squared. Okay. Now, in 4, we're asked, there are 640 square acres in a mile. Okay. All right. In, in a square mile, I should say. So in four, and I'm going to got to use a different color on the other than that, so we are at black in step four. We are asked to take our square miles and multiply that by 640 acres per mile squared. So now it's going to be in acres. So now we are at 0 0.942 acres. Okay, for our next thing in five, is there a good reason to doubt the owner's estimate of the acreage of their lot? So they said, um, let's see, what do they say, Jim? A little more than an acre. They said. You know, a little more than an acre, but we found out that by paces, we have about an acre. So maybe it is, maybe it isn't, because those, you know, it, still, it was still paces going through all this. Um, so in five, the question is, is there a good reason to doubt the owner's estimate? No. Um, fairly close based on rough estimate of paces. Okay. Now, in the last question, it says, would Jim and Barbara be able to modify their system to estimate the area of an irregular lot with five sides? Well, when we're doing this five side thing in the six slot, okay, in number six, if I got a five sided lot, let's say, ooh, a pentagon, okay, it's not perfect. But if I break it up into three triangles, I could do this exact same thing and I'll have three sectors that I'll have to find the areas. So, yes, make three triangles. Okay. Now, the, why did we do this problem? The biggest thing was we got to practice herons. We did it twice. We got to do the estimates, and we, uh, based on paces, we did um, square feet, and then we went from square feet to square miles, and we took how many square miles, um, you know, how many acres are in a square mile, incidentally 640, and then we determined how many acres that plot was. And so we did some estimates that are pretty nice to know, but the Heron's formula thing was why. Now, those are done, and the remainder of the time is for you guys to finish the assignment. And we got 5-6-A and 5-6-B, and that's what we've got going on with those. So make sure you're being productive and getting things done. We have a test um, this week in three days. Make sure that you're getting things done, and if you need to, the review is on Schoology, and so are the uh, solutions. There are some new problems in the review that I will make sure I get a solution to soon. Have yourself a great day.